Hi guys. <clears throat> it is a gray and gloomy, soon to be stormy day here in the end times in Paradise in Garfield, Texas on this yucky, humid, <clears throat> sweltering uh, Thursday morning, May 3rd, 2018. So it being Thursday morning, Normally, I uh, bring you my depressed, collapsitarian whine of the day, but uh, for one thing, I'm too depressed to give you a, uh, to come out with a depressed, collapsitarian whine. Uh, number two, I'm just going to let my uh, scene with the air conditioner from a couple of days ago stand as this week's depressed collapsitarian whine. And number three, uh, the whine that I am now in the middle of is, is I'm in the middle of it. And, and that I, I know my buddy Mark from West Bumblefuck can appreciate this. I am now and found myself enmeshed in, in this war with the goddamn Texas Drivers License Bureau. I have entered bureaucratic red tape hill. And I have no idea uh, when this nightmare, brain-eating, soul-killing fucking nightmare is, is going to wind up. And uh, you will hear that story later. But uh, since I'm too depressed to bring you a depressed collapsitarian whine, what I'm going to do instead is just do what I'm going to be doing every day starting in a few days on my new YouTube channel. Uh, and that's what I do every Tuesday and simply open up the mainstream media to take Al Gore's advice to take a walk through the book of Revelation by reading uh, just the headlines uh, from the main, the, the morning headlines from the mainstream media. And uh, so we're going to do just that, and since Thursday used to be my Dump the Trump Dehive Roundup rant, I'm just going to, uh, on Thursday, try to start out with a Donald Trump uh, doomsday headline. So let me get out my, uh, my buttons here. Wow. Trump proposes easing oil and gas leasing restrictions in West. Oh shit, Sherlock. Hmm. Do you think so? The Trump administration wants to ease restrictions on oil and gas leasing and other activities across a huge swath of the American West <coughs> that were put in place to protect an imperiled bird. Hmm. This uh, involves the conservation plans for the greater sage grouse, uh, who's in the way. The greater sage grouse is in the way as president. Donald Trump has vowed to increase U.S. energy production and open more of our public lands to drilling. No shit, Sherlock. All right. From uh, Donald Trump, we'll see if this involves Donald Trump uh, in the next couple of years or not. <clears throat> From the South China Sea, I like to keep you posted on where World War III uh, is getting ready to erupt. Okay, wow. China installs cruise missiles on South China Sea outposts. No shit, Sherlock. China has installed anti-ship cruise missiles and surface-to-air missile systems on three of its outposts in the South China Sea, uh, CNBC reported on Wednesday, citing sources with direct knowledge of U.S. intelligence report. The move, if confirmed, 
would mark the first Chinese missile deployments in the Spratly Islands where several Asian countries, including Vietnam and Taiwan, have rival claims. Okay, from oil wars in the South China Sea leading to World War III, let's come back to our own country. <clears throat> Storage plan for spent f nuclear fuel adds to U.S. nuclear debate. A plan to temporarily store, to temporarily store. <laughs> Tons of spent fuel from U.S. commercial nuclear reactors in New Mexico is drawing fire from critics who say the federal government needs to consider more alternatives. Yes. Uh, do you think so? How about the alternative of stop creating more of this shit? But of course, we still have this. Uh, my buddy Jay Condor from Brazil sent me this story, but I picked up this version from the French news service because his version was in Portuguese. Wow. Amazon River Dolphins in steep decline. Two kinds of river dolphins are dying off fast in the Amazon region and may face extinction unless they are more vigorously protected against fishing, researchers said in Brazil said on Wednesday. Once considered abundant in the Amazon basin, the Boto and the Tucuxi are both now halving in population every 10 years. Experts say the fresh water dolphins are increasingly being killed for use as catfish bait, a practice that endangers their very survival, particularly since the females bear a single calf on the average of every four to five years. Uh, anyway, two more, and there's an excellent documentary on Netflix uh, for anyone with the stomach to watch it. I wish I could remember the name of that documentary on Netflix about these dolphins. Uh, anyway, if you've ever really, really been so enraged that you think you could actually kill somebody. I, I invite you to watch that, uh, that uh, documentary about these clueless fucking morons murdering, slaughtering, and butchering these endangered dolphins to slice up as catfish bait. Uh, we, we are completely fucked. From Brazil to Kenya. Wow. Poachers shoot dead three rhinos inside Kenyan wildlife sanctuary. Poachers have shot dead three critically endangered black rhinos in a specially protected sanctuary in northern Kenya, the Wildlife Service said today. Two adults and a calf. A calf. How much fucking rhino horn could a baby rhino have? Two adults and a calf were killed inside the fenced rhino sanctuary in Meru National Parks and had their horns removed. Uh, quote from a uh, these rhino huggers, quote, it is with a heavy heart that we announce the poaching of three 
rhinos last night at the rhino sanctuary. Gunshots were heard and ambushes laid at strategic points till morning. There you go. D D D from Kenya to well, let's just stay in Kenya. Uh, see if you can draw some dots, possibly between that story and this story. Could there be any dots between three rhinos gunned down in a specially designed rhino? Uh, reserve in Kenya and this story corrupt officials to blame for loss of Kenya's forest cover no shit, a government task force in the shithole country of Kenya has called for the management of the Kenya Forest Service to be sacked and some of its staff investigated for alleged corruption, which it said had allowed for illegal logging and significant destruction to forests. Ken Kenya has a forest cover of 7.4% of its land area today, compared to around 12% 50 years ago. Experts have long warned that the continued destruction of Kenya's forest will lead to a water crisis that could extend far beyond its borders. No shit, Sherlock. From uh, Kenya to Thailand, this is for all the Agenda 21 uh, conspiracy wackos talking about uh, as the 21st century progresses, you can expect these goddamn planet-eating one percenters, these New World Order one percenters, to start using public lands as their little private hunting reserves. This is a very common conspiracy wacko from the Agenda 21 folks. Hmm. Wow. Thai tycoon denies poaching protected wildlife. The president of Italian Thai Development Corporation, Thailand's largest construction company, pleaded not guilty on Wednesday to trespassing in a wildlife sanctuary and poaching, his lawyer said. This is Prem Chai Karna Sutta, and three company executives were arrested in February for allegedly poaching protected wildlife in the Thung Yai Narsuan Wildlife Sanctuary. <clears throat> Several carcasses of protected animals, including a black Indo-Chinese leopard, were found near their jungle campsite, National Park Rangers said. No shit, Sherlock. All right, from Thailand to the shithole country of Madagascar, I mentioned this last week in my ecological meltdown roundup rant, which I think about 10 people on the planet tuned into. Over 10,000 endangered tortoises are rescued in Madagascar. <coughs> International conservationists in Madagascar have been treating more than 10,000 critically endangered radiated tortoises that were seized from wildlife traffickers who crammed the creatures into a home with no access to food or water. Yep, hundreds of the tortoises have already died from illness and dehydration. No shit, Sherlock. 
from the shithole uh, country of uh, Madagascar. Let's go over there to Israel. Uh, how about this one? <clears throat> Tyson Foods. Tyson Foods backs Israeli startup to grow meat in the laboratory. Tyson Foods, the largest U.S. meat processor, has invested in an Israeli biotech company developing a way to grow affordable meat in a laboratory that takes live animals out of the equation. Future Meat Technologies Incorporated focuses on producing fat and muscle cells that are the core building blocks of meat and is just one of several firms working on technology to match rising demand for meat without adding more pressure on land from livestock. Okay, from Israel to India, well, the vote is now in for 2018's most polluted city on the planet. This year's award going to Kanpur, India. Kanpur leads World Health Organization blacklist of cities with the worst air pollution. Residents of Kanpur reacted with dismay on Wednesday after the Indian city was found to have the worst air quality in a global World Health Organization survey that urged the nation to clean up its act. Fourteen Indian cities led by the northern metropolises known for its leather and shoe industries featured in the 15 cities with the dirtiest air in the global list. Uh, the capital New Delhi and Agra, home of the Taj Mahal, also figured among the cities with the worst air in the survey of 4,300 cities over 100 countries. And from India to the shithole country of England, of, of Zombie Island, this is the BBC uh, News reporting, UK's most polluted towns and cities revealed <coughs> more than 40 towns and cities in the United Kingdom are at or have exceeded air pollution limits set by the World Health Organization, its new report has found. Uh, the new data shows 31 uh, areas have fine particle air pollution levels uh, above 10 micro, micrograms per cubic meter, while another 15 are at the limit. Uh, and areas that exceeded the level include both London and Manchester, but the Welsh steelworking town Port Talbot is the worst. Oh, shit, Sherlock. Yep. All right. From uh, the UK back to the shit hell co continent of Africa. Africa struggles for weapons against army worm curse. On farms across Africa, a seemingly innocuous brown and beige caterpillar is waging a silent war, devastating rural incomes, and posing a major threat to the shithole continent's food supply. In just two years, the so-called fall army worm has colonized three-quarters of Africa, 
its favorite food is corn, <coughs> also known as maize, on which over 200 million smallholder farming families depend for their livelihoods. The army worm is believed to its made its bridgehead after being accidentally brought in from South America, its native home, by sea or air cargo. Oh shit, Sherlock. From the shithole continent of Africa to the shithole state of Kansas, where we see northern Kansas wheat needs rain yield potentially down versus a year ago. <clears throat> wheat in northern Kansas badly needs rain and warmer temperatures to fend off a crop shortfall after farmers planted the fewest acres in a century. <coughs> Kansas is the largest wheat producer in the U.S. The world's number two exporter of the food grain after top supplier Russia. Because of drought in the southern plains, uh, Kansas July hard red, or hard red winter wheat futures are up about 25 percent so far in 2018. Wheat plants were short and immature and soils were dry in northeast and north central Kansas. Uh, yep, these conditions underscore a late start to planting last autumn and the challenges that lie ahead. Okay, from the shithole state of Kansas back to the shithole country of India. India rain and dust storm kills at least 90 people and injures 160. <clears throat> at least 90 people have died and another 160 were injured as heavy rain and a dust storm struck northern and western India last night. Some of the most severe damage was reported in Agra, home to the Taj Mahal. More than 40 people were killed in that city when winds as high as 80 miles an hour collapsed houses and brought down trees. Right from India to the Bering Sea. The Bering Sea's ice has never melted this early before. Uh, I'm going to be coming back getting more in depth with these stories on Wednesday in my final climate change roundup rant. These next few stories. Ice in the Bering Sea, I'm sorry, on Alaska's west coast, the feeble April sun is shining this week on a fresh spot of open water. The sea ice found there for ages every spring is gone. Ice in the Bering Sea, the narrow body of water between Russia and Alaska, has dropped to its lowest springtime level since at least 1850. And all that time, no other year has come close. After a winter filled with unusually high temperatures, sea ice now sits at less than 10% of what could previously be considered normal. This is Rick Tom Toman, a climatologist at the National Weather Service in Alaska. Quote, we have fallen off a cliff. Okay, 
from uh, Alaska to the happiest country on the planet, Finland. <clears throat> Environmental group to carve Donald Trump's face into the side of an Arctic iceberg. A climate change group is raising half a million dollars with the goal of carving President Donald Trump's face into an Arctic iceberg. The Finnish group Melting Ice is spearheading with the intention of carving a 115 foot ice sculpture of Mr. Trump's face and have dubbed the effort Project Trump More. They hope that they will be illustrate be able to illustrate the dangers of climate change by watching to see how long the sculpture of Donald Trump's face takes to melt. All right. Wow. Hmm. The people from the Washington Post, the people who will be most hurt by climate swings, did the least to cause them, study says. Oh, shit, Sherlock. D, 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 from over to Business Insider. What is on the minds of Business Insider today, if I can ever get down to the actual article. Is the article ever going to appear? Or are we just going to get their logo being repeated 500 fucking times? Finally, China is attempting the largest artificial rain experiment in history over an area three times the size of Spain. China is building the foundations of what will become the largest artificial rain experiment in history in an attempt to increase to induce extra rainfall over the Tibetan uh, plateau. Uh, the project will see tens of thousands of fuel burning chambers installed across the Tibetan mountains uh, with a view to boosting rainfall in the region by up to 10 billion cubic meters annually. Don't know which button to uh, pick up on that one. Uh, well, here's, I guess, some good news. The U.S. Forest Service has more cash to fight catastrophic wildfires. Well, that's a good thing. I think we already, don't we have, haven't we already had two of our first wildfires in Oklahoma and Arizona? Uh, but anyway, I'm just going to wrap up with two or three final stories. Waste disposal option ends for Salmon River rafters. People rafting Idaho's Salmon River this summer will need to find an alternative way to dispose, to dispose of their feces after authorities have discontinued the long-standing disposal method. The Forest Service requires floaters to pack out their human waste on river trips about 10,000 people are expected to float the river this summer. Quoting some forest ranger, quote, we just have to tell people we don't have an option for them this year. Talk about being up shit river without a toilet. Two more, I've already mentioned this, many uh, versions of, of the reviews of the Flat uh, Earth Society. Flat Earthers explain why we don't fall off the edge of our planet, and it involves pack 
Man. Uh, okay. See, one of the more interesting pieces of evidence came from Speaker Darren Nesbitt, who referred to the, quote, Pac-Man effect as the reason why airplanes don't fall off the edge of a flat earth. Hmm. When a plane or other object, such as a person, reaches the edge of the flat horizon, such as when Pac-Man reaches the end of the screen, that object will simply teleport from one side of the planet to the other, a la Pac-Man entering from the other side of the screen. There you go! And we're going to wrap up with new mom Kylie Jenner explains why she loves changing diapers from HuffPost. Okay. Uh, let's see. She admitted that she likes changing her daughter Stormy's diapers. Quote, I think more about the future because of her. No shit, Sherlock. Every time I leave and I'm stressed about leaving her, I'm like, I'm doing it for you. Everyone says you change completely when you become a mom, but I really feel the same, just better. So, I don't know what really has completely changed my world besides her, of course. I actually enjoy changing her diapers. It is really satisfying to make her clean again. And I don't know, the whole thing is really, it's like such an amazing experience. That was bullshit. Yes, wiping the shit out of a dirty diaper as you think about your adorable little uh, shit-spewing bundle of planet nibbling joys uh, future. And if you're not aware of it, darling, your little shitty uh, planet eating bundle of joys future is she'd better smoke them if she's got them because her future like ours we are so fucked but I've got to wrap up this rant uh, this this rant and get back to my uh, living hill of getting back uh, into war with the motherfucking clueless morons at the Texas Drivers License Bureau. Wish me luck on that one. Bye, guys.